Okay. Um, this is just a couple of sample problems from sections 5, 7, and 5, 8. I'm just going to go through a quick setup and work through a few problems when they go with your book. So we did this last week, um, but remember scale models. You can think of organizing your information in a ratio table um, just to help you organize your thoughts. You don't actually uh, have to do too much with the ratio table, but it does help to sort of put some titles in and make sure you know what's what. So in this first problem here, scale map. The scale of a map is one inch to 20 miles, so that means um, for every one inch on the map, it represents 20 miles in actuality. So what we want to do is figure out how many actual miles does each of the following measures represent, this being the first one here, one and one eighth. So we know that one and one eighth is the value in the scale drawing, so that's in the inches chart, and we want to figure out what x is. So this just allows us to set up a little ratio of proportion. We know from our work on ratio proportions, these are equal, so we can say 1 times x is x, and that's equal to 20 times 1 and an eighth. And when we do fraction multiplication, this is 8 times 1 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So it's 20 times 9 eighths. So when I multiply fractions, I can simplify along the way. So 4 goes into both 8 and 20. So 4 goes into 8 2 times and 25 times. So now I can multiply and I get 45. 1 times 2 is 2. So this is 22 and a half for x. So 1 and 1 eighth inches represents 22 and a half miles in actuality. Let's just practice one more example. Same idea. You go through the same process. So we have inches and miles. And we still are going to use the same scale of one inch representing 20 miles. We want to figure out how many miles does three and three quarters inches represent. So I'll call that Y. So again, we're going to set up another ratio proportion. So we know that y is equal to 20 times 3 and 3 fourths. And we're going to change 3 and 3 fourths. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 3 is 15. So that's 15 fourths. We can multiply that by 20. Remember, when we multiply fractions, we can reduce. So 4 just divides into itself once, and it divides into 25 times. 5 times 15 is 75. 1 times 1 is 1. So y is 75 miles. So on the second example, it's really the same thing. The scale of a model building is now different. It's one inch represents forty miles. But the process is the same. Suppose the height of a model is three and an eighth inch, three and an eighth inch, that's in the model. What's the actual height? So we just put a Z there and do the same 
cross multiply because this is a ratio and proportion. So we say z equals 40 times 3 and an eighth. 3 and an eighth, eighth is 25 eighths. And one more practice, 8 goes into itself once, goes into 45 times. Multiply the denominators and you get a 1. Multiply the numerators and you get 125. So Z is 125 miles. So that's pretty much what you're doing in section 5-7. And in section 5-8, you're using uh, proportions to find missing values in hidden triangles. So let's look at this example. The telephone booth, that's right here. You don't see those much anymore at all. <laughs> um, seven seven feet tall, so the height of the telephone booth you see right here is seven feet. Cast a shadow, so the shadow, the whole shadow is along here. And that shadow is 20 feet long. At the same time, a nearby fire hydrant, so that's right here, the fire hydrant, it casts a shadow, which would be right here. That's eight feet long. And your goal is to find H, the height of the fire hydrant. So like we talked about in class, there's similar triangles here. There's this big triangle. So imagine taking this out of the picture. This is seven feet by 20 feet. And then there's this little triangle. Take that out of the picture. And this is H, we don't know this value, but we know this is 8, and we know the triangles are similar because, as we talked about in class um, last week, these are both right angles, and this angle is the same in both triangles. So if you subtract, you find out that these angles were equal. So when all the angles are equal in a triangle, you have similar triangles. So we could set up a ratio and proportion. So we could say 7 compares to 20, make a ratio. And we are comparing that as h compares to 8. We're going to solve that ratio the same way we've been solving all our ratio and proportions. 7 times 8 is 56. That's equal to 20 h. Move that over here. Maybe another way to think about it then is don't multiply out yet. You can say 7 times 8 like this is equal to 20 h. And then divide both sides by 20. And you can reduce along the way. 4 goes into 8 twice, and it goes into 25 times. So 7 times 2 is 14. There's a 5 on the bottom. So 5 goes into 14 two times. There's 4 left over. So h is 2 and 4 fifths. And the units on this are feet because the units in the picture are feet. So h is 2 and 4 fifths feet. If you look back over here, you could have divided by 20 here and multiplied out to get 56. That would be okay too a little room here. And then, that might be easier for some of you, 56 and 20 both have 2 in common. Or you could say 20 goes into 56 twice, and you have 16 left over, and then reduce 16 twentieths to be 4 fifths. Still end up with the same answer. So in this section, you're looking for two triangles within a picture that will help you find missing values. In, in the second example, it looks really different, but the concept's the same. So here, the, the author tells you you have similar triangles. So P, remember, is the same angle as T, and Q is the same angle as S, same value. And R is equal to 
and so so we have equal angles in triangles three equal angles so we know we have similar triangles which means we can set up a proportion now on this problem sometimes it's hard to visualize without separating these you want to be careful what you set equal to what so if I take this one out of the picture and rotate it so it looks like the one on the bottom it's easier to compare so remember P is now going to be well for example first of all R is here now but I rotated this top triangle so P is here and it shows you up in this that P and T are equal so they should be in the same position P is on the far right T is on the far right R is on the top R is on the top and since S and Q are equal S is on the left so Q is on the left now I'm going to take the missing values from R to Q is 225 meters so I put it on this picture the missing value from P to Q is D so I'm going to set up a ratio here with comparing 225 to D like I compare 150 to 240. So that's going to be my work. I'll say 150 compares to 240 as 225 compares to D. Before you get to multiplying big giant numbers, remember you can reduce these both down by 10. Think of this as 15 over 24. Then you could also see that 15 divides by 3. So sometimes it's simple or sim easy, easier to divide down and then do the cross multiply and divide now I've reduced so much. Now I'm going to cross multiply. So 8 times 225 is equal to 5 times D from here. And you'll notice I didn't multiply 8 times 225 out because I'm going to divide by 5. So 5, let's practice that short division. 5 goes into itself once. It goes into 22 four times with the remainder of 2. 5 goes into 25 five times. So I have 8 times 45 left on top. That's what D is. So that's the same as 8 times 40, which is 320, plus 8 times 5, which is 40. So 360 equals C. So look back at the picture. Let's see if that makes some sense. This would be meters. So this is the biggest value compared to the 150 in the small triangle. So the D should be bigger than the 225 in the big triangle. And that's your final answer. Okay, I'll post that. Hopefully that helps you if you have any questions soon.